And can I also uh, like switch on the slides if I need to move, or maybe you guys would be doing it? No, you can only can. Like is okay. I don't get an option. Okay, now I can. Huh, you just can. have to click on next. Time. No, no, no. I have. Great. Okay. Okay. So third slide. Okay. Third slide has a video. Uh, yeah. Ranadi, start correct. Bon. Yes. Start correct. We are live now. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's webinar on destination Germany, broadcasted by Travel Trends today. I, Akshay Kumar, Senior Correspondent, Travel Trends Today, will be your host. Germany is an ideal destination for visitors of all ages. There is so much to experience and explore in Germany that it cannot be completed in a single visit. In this webinar, we will provide a unique platform for tour operators to get better acquainted with destination Germany know all about the most popular itineraries and civic routes. I would like to introduce the speaker for the day. We have Ms. Anika Tandon from the German National Tourist Office India, who will be taking us through a wonderful presentation. We also have amongst us Mr. Saurabh Vashish from GNTO and Mr. Ramut Theophilus, a Director for German National Tourist Office India. Before proceeding with our webinar, I would like to highlight a few important instructions. Audience can feel free to click on any of the widgets available at the bottom of your screen to know more about the corresponding information that particular widget is carrying. Please feel free to ask any questions during the course of the webinar pertaining to the topic by clicking on the Q&A tab. If you still have any questions regarding anything related to this program, please feel free to ask a question and our technical assistant would be pleased to help you. So let us start. Over to you, Anika. Great. Thank you so much, Akshay. Uh, firstly, apologies, guys. Uh, I'm really sorry that, you know, my uh, video is not working. I have no idea, but I'm sure you guys will still enjoy the presentation. And there are a few interesting videos which you'll get to see. So I'm sure uh, by sitting at home, you all will still enjoy what Germany has to offer. So uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining today and allowing us to showcase the majestic land of Germany and uh, picturing Germany as a beautiful winterland, especially uh, around Christmas in Germany. Well, uh, everybody is aware that, you know, while travel is on hold and now is the time to experience and enjoy the very best of Germany uh, from the comfort of your own, ho own home. Hence, uh, I actually have a video of your favorite towns and cities, or maybe museums and attractions you always had on your wish list. So let's just switch on to the video and I We are living in unprecedented times. Only in our dreams can we travel. Using the power of our imagination, we can take ourselves wherever we wish. Where are you dreaming of? I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming of a hike through unspoiled nature. I'm dreaming of cycling through scenic landscapes. I'm dreaming of riding the waves and of cooling off in the water. I'm dreaming of having fun and living life to the full. I'm dreaming of the adrenaline rush. What are you dreaming of? I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming of strolling through medieval lanes and alleyways. I'm dreaming of beautiful towns and captivating cities. I'm dreaming of whiling away the hours in cafes, of tasty street food and of fine dining. I'm dreaming of epic shopping. I'm dreaming of world famous attractions and amazing architecture. I'm dreaming of meeting friends and making memories to last a lifetime. What are you dreaming of? I'm dreaming. 
I'm dreaming of regal palaces and fairy tale castles. I'm dreaming of culture and the arts, of theaters and museums, ballet and opera. I'm dreaming of buildings and monuments steeped in history. I'm dreaming of time on the traditions and customs. I'm dreaming of making new friends and seeing new places. What are you dreaming of? I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming of panoramic views and the great outdoors. I'm dreaming of the sun on my face, the wind in my hair. I'm dreaming of soaring mountain peaks and crystal clear lakes. I'm dreaming of the sights and sounds of the forest. I'm dreaming of riverside picnics and walking in the hills. I'm dreaming of windswept moors and endless nature. What are you dreaming of? Auf Wiedersehen. We can't wait to see you again and to turn your dreams into reality. Destination Germany. Discover Germany from home. Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Well, we all can now start dreaming and until we guys plan our travel. Well, uh, this is moving on. Uh, this is this list of consulates and VFS Pan India listed on this very slide. Uh, so this is just for your better understanding of the country, especially when people are planning out on a multi-country option. So for instance, uh, if uh, you are already in Germany and you want to make an excursion to the northern part of uh, Europe, maybe uh, for instance, uh, you're in Hamburg and you want to go to Denmark, then of course you can easily plan your trip to Denmark or, or maybe Copenhagen. Or if you are in the eastern part of Germany, be it Berlin, uh, you can easily drive or take a train ride to Poland or Czech Republic, which is just two, two and a half hours journey. Also, you know, in case if you are in the region of Bavaria or Munich, you can easily come to Austria. You can, uh, with your uh, Schengen visa, you can easily travel to all these countries. So instance, if you are in Black Forest, you can easily club your uh, itinerary with Switzerland or maybe France. Or if you want to explore the self-drive area, which is your Rhine region, you can easily club your destination with uh, Luxembourg, Belgium, Netherlands. So there's a lot of things one can actually do when uh, your client or you yourself are planning to make a trip to Germany and how well it's connected. Uh, talking about connectivity, uh, Germany has got airports in few major cities, uh, such as uh, Frankfurt, which is the third largest one in Europe, uh, Stuttgart, Munich, Nuremberg, Dusseldorf, Cologne, Hamburg, Berlin. So you can actually start planning, or maybe you can actually start uh, even planning your itinerary in such a way that it could be clubbed well with other European countries. Well, one can also explore varied mode of transportation from Europe into different countries uh, via plane, train, coach, car, or ferry. So this is just to give you geographically how well uh, Germany is connected with other countries. Uh, these are our diverse regions of Germany, and each are real hidden gems when it comes to unique holiday experiences. So I will be talking uh, in detail about all these uh, regions and towns and cities, which I'm sure you might want to plan for your next travel season. Well, uh, to begin with, I would like to highlight some interesting features about Germany. Germany's hotels, guest houses, and other types of attractions are amongst the best in Europe and very much pocket-friendly, affordable, and value for money. Talking about attractions, uh, Germany's parks, palaces, and gardens are perfect for uh, romantic tours. Uh, you know, maybe starting in Bavaria, we've got the Neuschwanstein Castle, which is in Fusen, or we've got uh, the English Garden, which is in Munich, or the Hohenzollern Castle in Southwest Germany, and of course, the beer gardens across the country, which are not to be missed. I am sure, you know, these are all tongue twisters and difficult to remember, but uh, we are here. We can help you out anytime, wherever you guys are stuck. Well, when it comes to food, uh, we've got more than 1,500 Indian restaurants. And uh, talking about vegetarian options, uh, there is plenty due to the fact that 
10% of population is now vegan. So if anyone is planning a gourmet tour of uh, Germany, you can expect an uh, infinite wealth of uh, gastronomic delights. So a vegetarian would not be just left hungry. So there are a lot of vegetarian options one can avail when he or she is visiting in Germany. Well, uh, Germany's scenic routes are ideal for discovering the country by car. One can choose from over 150 scenic routes, which we've actually got in Germany, and each fe featuring different aspects of Germany's region. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you would already be aware about few scenic routes of Germany. Uh, the famous ones are the German fairy tale route, the romantic route, or maybe the Alpine route. Uh, so. I will be again talking about these scenic routes in detail in my coming following slides. People who are adventure lovers, uh, Germany's, Germany offers both scenic and uh, adventure holidays uh, from hiking, biking, skiing, or uh, sledding. So with so many different natural highlights, Germany has a surprise for every everyone, even for a person who is just into city life or who is more of an adventure lover. So there are a lot of uh, activities one can actually do when uh, you are in Germany. Well, talking about shopping, uh, Germany is a shopper's paradise with its uh, irresistible offers in districts like Metzingen, uh, which is just 40 minutes drive uh, from Stuttgart, or Ingolstadt, which is uh, near Munich, or maybe Wertheim Village, which is again 30, 40 minutes from Frankfurt. So travelers actually can benefit from tax-free shopping in many stores throughout Germany. So it's just filling out a simple uh, form and when exiting the country not only in germany but anywhere from europe you can easily avail this uh, benefit well talking about theme parks uh, germany germany's theme parks offers variety for action packed holiday fun and are also very popular with children so one of the famous ones and i'm sure a lot of you would already have uh, promoted or have sold uh, or maybe you are uh, planning to visit maybe with your family so that's the one which is in uh, located in southwest germany which is the europa park and it is actually the biggest theme park in the german speaking countries and it is also one of the very few which is open in winters so uh, definitely uh, it's very affordable uh, and, you know, even if you compare with any other theme park in any other country in Europe, you'll be amazed to see the attractions uh, and uh, the affordability factor and the accommodation facilities which are available within the theme park. In fact, the accommodation uh, have, are in a form of uh, a Spanish jail. All theme-based hotels are, and again, four-star plus hotels, which are very much affordable for your uh, plan or for your clients. Well, uh, Germany is a dream destination, especially uh, for spa lovers. One can take a break from everyday life and come to Germany and relax. One of the famous ones, uh, the famous spa towns in Germany is Baden-Baden. Germany is also one of the countries uh, where there is no speed limit. In some of the autobahns or like we say, the highways, and especially for travelers who want to self-drive uh, with your Indian driving license, you don't need any other uh, additional permit. So with your Indian driving license, you can easily drive around these uh, autobahns or the highways. Well, since uh, um, not a major, but our focus still is winters uh, and uh, the Christmas holidays in Germany. So Germany winters are uh, cold with, tempera with temperatures often uh, dropping below zero degrees. But Germany has much to offer in winters with its beautiful Christmas markets, winter sports, and lovely snowy landscapes, which actually attract many visitors from around the world each year. Uh, it is also one of the best times of the year to enjoy a German winter festival. Uh, for instance, you know, uh, the glue wine, uh, which is a traditional winter drink uh, of Germany, can be enjoyed when you are in Germany. So that's basically a mulled wine, what we call it as. Even during winters, you know, foodies can enjoy a great spread of traditional homemade delicac delicacies in different regions, wherever you are. It is also a great time to go ice skating. Uh, the very famous ones are in Heidelberg, Munich, or the Garmisch-Partenkirchen, which is very close to the highest mountain peak, Zugspitze. The, all these washed outdoor is a perfect uh, ice rink, which offers breathtaking views. So there is a lot to do, uh, especially when you are uh, in Germany during winter. 
during winter time uh, also i would like to tell you all that unfortunately during these uh, covid times uh, most of the christmas markets are not taking place in germany so maybe this is one of the reasons that you know we wanted to highlight that uh, not only summers but winters is also a best time uh, one can easily visit germany so maybe for your next uh, 2021 you all can start uh, planning your holiday for your clients or even start promoting winter fun in germany well uh, traveling during like i mentioned about the christmas 2021 so traveling during christmas is not just fun but is also the best time to enjoy some uh, world renowned uh, attractions and markets which takes place in germany uh, there are a lot of uh, there are colorful uh, people are selling uh, colorful wooden toys uh mild wines and also the german food so germany also plays host to some of europe's very best markets uh and that actually starts in the month of november november and run up uh, until christmas eve so for your next christmas in 2021 you could look at exploring the christmas markets uh, which is in munich uh which is called the munchner christian markt or nuremberg or uh, in fact dresden as well so these are like few list of options which i've mentioned in my itinerary in my slide so that you know whenever you're planning your next uh, christmas or a winter vacation you could definitely make a stop at these cities well one can also enjoy christmas uh in the um, the christmas eve at berlin cathedral or uh, the largest advent calendar house which is located in southwest germany in gengenbach so these are like few uh, options one can actually do uh, when uh, you are uh, when you are planning your trip to germany or there's also a very charming and a christmas uh, town it's also called the christmas village idol which is located near saxony uh, and it's called uh, annaberg buchholz i know again it's little difficult to remember these words uh, these cities but uh, maybe this presentation would also be shared with you and of course as i said we guys are here uh, we are based out of delhi so you can reach out to us anytime well uh, here are few interesting itineraries routes i have designed for you and the best way to explore is driving through these scenic and uh, pictures king roads well uh, to start with uh, we've got the romantic road which takes you on a journey of approximately 400 kilometers from wurzburg to fussen which is in the algau region also famous for neuschwanstein castle Well anyone visiting this route is rewarded with authentic german towns uh, romantic medieval timber framed houses and also you know i have already listed down the driving time between each city which is 40 minutes to 1 hour 30 minutes again it's not compulsory or it's a compulsion to make halt in each of these cities but definitely you can pick and choose depending on when are you traveling or who you are traveling with so just for your ready reference i have uh, listed down few highlights uh, of the route so maybe you know in case you are in wurzburg you can definitely enjoy the residence palace which is also the unesco world heritage site also rothenburg uh, which is known for its christmas museum uh, crime museum and also is known as a medi medieval townscape and uh you know especially this is uh, definitely to be promoted uh, to honeymooners because rothenburg is actually a romantic town of germany uh then we also have dinkelsbühl which is uh, famous for its saint george church or and the old town also nordlingen in case if you are planning uh, your trip with family with children then definitely you can uh, make a halt and uh, make an overnight at nordlingen or augsburg which is famous for real museum and puppet theater so these are like few uh, things one can definitely uh, visit uh, or make a visit when they are in uh, this route well now we uh, move to our next route which is the fairy tale route it is uh, home to fairies princes sleeping beauty uh, in fact also cinderella so you know this is a 600 km german fairy tale route uh, which transports you to the magical world of brother grim stories i'm sure we all have actually uh, grown uh, hearing uh, the brother the bruder grim or the brother grim stories uh, which starts from hanau to bremen and again if you see the uh, driving time between each city is just 2 hours to 30 minutes uh, 
so these are like few uh, routes which you can definitely do when you're planning a cell drive or maybe you know a train journey is also definitely uh, which will excite you because the routes which you go through are very uh, pictures feeling very authentic german towns again uh, for the fairy tale route i have listed down few highlights uh, so hanau is uh, famous for its uh, memorial what, what we are talking about here is the brother grim memorial which is in hanau then we have got uh, hamlin which is the uh, pipe piper city also bremen which is actually not to be missed because it's a beautiful town it's also known as a unesco world heritage site and uh, i'm sure everybody would already be aware about the bremen town musician so this uh, town musician is uh, known uh, to be in the city of bremen so even if you see in the map i have listed down the uh, distance it's it's not much far between each city so yeah these are like few routes which you can definitely plan to visit okay so now uh, we move to exploring some of the enchanting german cities uh, where you can actually discover germany okay we start with uh, frankfurt uh, which is one of the main attraction uh, that is museum embankment which is basically a series of uh, riverside museums we also have the old town which is well known for its rich and colorful history then we have got the riomer or uh, or how we call the city hall which is known for its cobbled street and old timber houses and not to be missed is the frankfurt apple wine express and or how the locals call it as the apple wine express it's basically a historical tram and one can explore the city on this express with a one hour long music or pretzels and also uh, as a cider you can also um, drink a frankfurt cider or an apple juice so these are like few little exciting things one can do and of course you know this works really best when you do not have much time in the city or maybe you just have one night one day and you really don't know what all to do so better you know you can actually take this apple wine express or apple wine express and the best way to do is uh, and the best way is to explore the city through this train well uh, now we move to cologne which is just uh, an hour half uh, ride by train and by car is just 2 hours it is one of the very interesting and vibrant cities which is famous for its eau de cologne also if you have groups uh, visiting cologne make sure that they visit this uh, the eau de cologne or the house of 4711 where one can buy or even make their own uh, eau de cologne and so these are like few exciting things uh, especially if, depending on the size of the group also they have uh, english tours uh, in this 4711 eau de cologne house so it works well with mice groups also and definitely if you are planning a trip with your families uh, of course make sure that you visit uh, this 4711 also cologne has the largest cologne cathedral in the world Uh, which you can actually see it in the picture on the left also it is listed as the unesco world heritage site and uh, lastly the cologne christmas uh, which is also uh, world famous along with the cologne carnival which takes place in the city of cologne okay now we move to uh, dusseldorf it is known for its uh, fashion industry uh it is divided uh, by the river rhine with its old town on the west and the commercial areas on the east and one can actually do boat rides at the rhine river it is uh, it also has the longest bar in the world uh it hosts 260 bars and restaurants in the old town in one row at every city uh has a palace of palace of its own so dusseldorf is also one of the cities which has a very striking residence with the uh, lake and uh, on it gardens so that's called the schloss uh, bernath uh, especially this is something which should not be missed if you are already in dusseldorf and you are a person who wants to explore some outdoor activities so we've got uh, this uh, jeva fanski hala which is right in the city center one can actually enjoy doing skiing sledding and any outdoor recreation in this uh, jeva fanski hala so yes maybe you know dusseldorf is just not another trade fair city but it also has lot of other things to offer to a tourist well now uh, 
we moved to Hamburg, Hamburg, which is just four hours by train and uh, by car, four or 30 minutes. So, you know, uh, in every uh, itinerary or every city, I've made sure that uh, a driving time or a train distance is uh, covered because so that for you, whenever you're planning, you know how far the city is from another. Well, uh, Hamburg is the largest city in Germany after Berlin. The city is known for its famous harbor area, which is the port of Hamburg. Uh, also, I would say no visit to Hamburg is complete without hitting the Ripperbahn, uh, which is the Hamburg's legendary nightlife, uh, famous for its bars, clubs, pubs, and discotheques. Also, Hamburg's miniature wonderland is the world's largest model railway. Uh, guided tours are highly recommended. There are a lot of times when people have come back saying that, uh, you know, we are traveling with kids. Uh, is there an option where we can uh, sit or we can dine? Yes, uh, in this miniature wonderland, dining and snacks are also available on site and it also has a restaurant for kids. Uh, so moving on, uh, then we move on to Beetle Square. Beetle Square re represents the Beatles during their Hamburg engagement. One of one can also do boat rides on Alster Rakes, and which is famous for sailing and kayaking in summer and skating in winter. And uh, the city actually has a major landmark, uh, which is the largest concert hall, which is Elfil Harmony, and is acoustically pleasing and uh, the and it's also one of the largest in the world, not only in Europe, but in the world. So yeah, these are like few things one can actually do when uh, you are in Hamburg. Well, now uh, we move to Berlin. Berlin uh, is just two hours by train and by car another half an hour. Berlin is bound to mesmerize all those who are keen to explore its vibrant culture. Uh, it has a beautiful architecture, fabulous food, uh, intense party culture, and a uh, lot of history. So even if you are in Berlin, make sure that, you know, just don't plan a trip only for a night because Berlin has a lot to offer. Uh, from Brandenburg Gate to Berlin Wall, we also have uh, the Legoland Discovery Center, which works well with kids. Uh, we've got the uh, Madame Tussauds or the Checkpoint, Checkpoint Charlie. As mentioned, uh, you know, it's a 24-7 party culture. It also has the largest uh, theater or the stage show, which is called the Friedrichstadt Palast. It's uh, similar to what we, what uh, Paris has, that's Lido show. And to also let you know that, you know, whenever you're planning a trip uh, to all these places, uh, maybe, you know, uh, for gala dinners or maybe or with your family, make sure that, you know, everything is booked well in advance because you will see these theaters, these concert halls are packed and they do not allow walk-ins. So better, you know, you plan your itinerary in such a way that everything is planned well, well in before and you do not get really hassled about getting entries. Well, uh, now we move to Dresden. Uh, if you see by car, it's quite qu quicker. It's two hours and by train, it's another 15 minutes. Uh, Dresden is also one of the iconic uh, places for honeymooners or travelers who have profound interest in art and architecture. One can also do steamboats through this Dresden Elbow Valley, which you can see it on the picture. It also has a great Indian connect, which is the quote of Aurangzeb. Uh, uh, which is uh, which you'll be see, which will be seen in the Green Wall Treasury Museum. It's uh, located right in the city center. Also, people who have interest in outdoor and they are just bored of the city life, they can definitely go to this uh, Saxon Switzerland National Park, which is again forty minutes from Dresden, and it is known for its Bastia Rock Formation or the Table Mountains. Works well when you are planning to do like an outdoor with your family or with your friends. Hiking is the best way. Also, people uh, you know who are not much walkers maybe still you can uh, make sure that you visit because it's really pretty and it's the the view around is breathtaking and like i mentioned before every city has its own castle yes dresden also has one that's called the Moritzburg castle it's a famous hunting palace well, now uh, we move to the region of Bavaria, the city of Munich, which is again by train 4 or 43 minutes and by car 4 or 40 minutes. Uh, it's not necessary to make stops in each city, but this is just to give you a generic idea as to how far each city is and how you can easily plan your trip from uh, Frankfurt into all these cities. Well, uh, so uh, Munich, 
is actually from lakes, parks, and beer gardens to muse museums, historical sites, and uh, pedestrian streets. There is something for everyone who visits Munich. It also is uh, a gateway to the Alps. In fact, you know, in case if you are already in Munich and uh, you are just there for a night, maybe you can also and do attractions like Alliance Arena, Nymphenburg Castle, or the BMW Weld, which is again world famous. Munich is also considered as a green city uh, with beautiful parks, museums, and palaces. And it also makes a good uh, base for day, trip, day trips to nearby cities. Uh, if you see, I've already listed down that you can make uh, excursions to Neuschwanstein Castle, which is in the city of Füssen, an inspiration to Disney's castle. Then you can go to Mountain Peak, which is Zugspitze, uh, which offers 360 guaranteed days of snow. Uh, also to the Christmas uh, city, the Christmas town city, which is Nuremberg, or uh, maybe the Hitler's vacation town, Burstes Garden. And uh, also the base area to go to Zugspitze is Garmisch Partenkirchen. And of course, not to be missed is Ingolstadt, which I already mentioned that there's a shopping outlet uh, closer to the city. So these are like few things one can do when you are uh, planning your trip to Munich. OK, so like I mentioned, Garmisch Partenkirchen. I know it's a tongue twister, difficult to remember, but uh, once you're there in the city, you'll forget where you are because it's really pretty. It's one of the uh, Bavarian town known for its unbelievable beauty. It is best known for Germany's highest peak, uh, which is Sukspitze. It is also a popular ski resort and is a paradise for winter and summer sports enthusiasts. Uh, you know, uh, like I mentioned, it also offers a snow experience uh, all year round. It gives you a, it offers four country panorama view, which is Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and Italy. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you would be thinking, how do you, uh, how do you go to, or how do you reach Zugspitze? Well, I'll just change my slide here. Uh, from by train, you can uh, take a train from Garmisch to Zugspitze, uh, which is one hour twenty five minutes, or maybe by car also. It's one hour, or maybe the best way to even do is via cable car, which is just one hour fifteen minutes. So that's these are like few. Uh, modes wherein you can reach Zugspitze. Of course, you have to take a direct cable car once you reach a place which is called IPC. And from IPC, you can take a direct cable car to Zugspitze. OK, now uh, we move to Stuttgart. So the distance is, again, uh, around uh, two hours. And by car, it's uh, two or 30 minutes, approx. Uh, there are a lot of times when people have come back saying that uh, what do you suggest or which uh, museum should we go? Is it the BMW Museum, which is in uh, Munich, or the Mercedes-Benz Museum, which is in Stuttgart? But personally, if you ask me, uh, then no, no judgment, please. But if you ask me personally which one is my favorite, then of course my favorite is Mercedes-Benz Museum because if you see it in the picture right itself, uh, the museum is built uh, or is uh, made in a form of a racing track. So once you visit that, you'll actually see that you're actually visiting or you'll, seeing, you'll see a racing track around. So that's something which is very intriguing and very exciting uh, when you are in this museum. Of course, I'm not telling you not to go to BMW, but this is just one of my favorite. Well, uh, uh, Coming back to Stuttgart, it is home to one of the world famous automobile museums, which is the Mercedes Benz Museum or the Porsche Museum. It is uh, Stuttgart is also one of the fabulous wine regions. And because of that, we also have uh, the very famous uh, Stuttgart Wine uh, Festival or a wine village, which takes place in this festival, in this village uh, in a nearby Stuttgart. Uh, then we also have uh, the second largest beer festival, which happens in uh, Stuttgart. That's called the Kantstarter Beer Festival. And also ha also hosts a lot of Bollywood mu uh, movies. And because of that fact, there's a Bollywood festival, which takes place every year in Stuttgart. OK, so now uh, we move to Black Forest. Black Forest is uh, a home to cuckoo clocks. It uh, has a striking half-timbered houses, rune castles, and quaint towns. Black Forest is a magical land full of uh, cultural traditions. It is also uh, world famous for its Black Forest cake. And 
as i mentioned it it has stunning beauty and it's a, one of the very picturesque landscapes in germany also uh, uh, like especially for outdoor lovers one can do hiking golfing water sports horse riding or inline skating and even paragliding in this city in this region of uh, black forest and uh, very much affordable as compared to other countries now uh, we move to baden baden which is uh, just by train another one one and a half hours journey or by car it's approx 1 hours and like i mentioned uh, europa park which is world famous theme park maybe you can also uh, do an excursion uh, to your as in you can make a day trip to europa park if you are in black forest or baden baden which is just 30 to 40 minutes drive to europa park so uh, like mentioned already baden baden is one of uh, europe's most fashionable spa town and it is an ideal base for exploring the black forest and a perfect place to even stay for maximum pampering uh, why pampering because they've got most luxurious uh, spas in the city which is the caracalla spa and the uh, roman irish friedrich bad so these are two spas which you can definitely uh, visit it also has germany's oldest and one of the most beautiful casinos not only in germany not in europe but in the world that's called baden baden casino make sure that you know uh, you guys are dressed well uh, all men have to wear their tuxedos and uh, women have to wear their pretty dresses only then you can get entry in this casino which is called baden baden casino also the best way to explore the city is uh, by uh, horse riding or maybe uh, you know one can experience or explore uh, many outdoor activities uh, like hiking golfing or even paragliding in the city okay now uh, we end our journey here and we end our journey at frankfurt airport so this is just to give you a little uh, guided tour that how you can start or end your uh, plan your trip starting from frankfurt and ending in frankfurt so frankfurt as i mentioned is the europe's third largest airport it also has a uh, quality high quality shopping and dining offers so in case if you have time to connect to uh, your next uh, flight definitely you should explore these uh, options it also has a wellness and spa area in house okay now i move forward uh well as i said winter is one of the best months to travel to germany uh, to prepare for your next holiday season i have listed down few interesting and unique towns and cities one could visit uh, especially in winters well uh, okay just yeah well to start with uh, we are in the city of bamberg bamberg uh, in the region of bavaria the city itself is known as the unesco world heritage site bamberg portrays an island city with little venice you can see it in the picture itself that you know it, it uh, it's more of a little venice bamberg uh, so this is something which is very interesting and i'm sure a lot of people would not be aware of this that bamberg uh, actually means uh, beer from 10 breweries and because of that the city is subbed in traditional beer pubs one can also shop here at the old town and it is also very famous for its christmas market uh, which is located on the maxplatz uh, square so definitely you know if you are in uh, the region of bavaria definitely you can make a uh, move to bamberg well now uh, me we move to nuremberg nuremberg is again another uh, christmas town uh, famous for its old town also if you have your if have if you have kids uh, with you uh, to nuremberg definitely you can try out uh, the toy museum or maybe very famous ones uh, in nuremberg is the baroque church uh, which is called the saint edigen okay now we move to rothenburg ob der taube uh, which is like i mentioned is one of the beautiful towns it's known for its romantic town maybe for honeymooners it really works well even if you want to visit uh, this town during christmas then definitely uh, you can make a stay here it is also famous for its cobble street and medieval town uh, now we move to lake constance so lake constance is another interesting site uh, which is bordered by austria and switzerland it is also the largest lake in germany and uh, known for water sports the area is famous for its old castles uh, quaint medieval villages 
and uh, it's a very pretty town, especially uh, during winters. OK, now we move to Lake Titisi. Uh, it is one of the popular holiday places in Germany. Uh, this lake is uh, surrounded by lakefront on one side and walkways and garden on one side. So well, you're, when you're visiting Black Forest, uh, Lake Titisi is worth a visit. And it also uh, has a lot of boutique uh, hotels and five-star hotel properties. So definitely, if you are in Black Forest, make sure that you know you are uh, stopping and you are making a, making a one night in Lake Tetisi. OK, now we move to Freiburg. Uh, so uh, you'll be wondering that you know how far uh, all these cities are from one another. Well, I've listed down in such a way that you know every city is not more than two hours of a distance. So definitely, it can be planned well in your itinerary. And these towns really work well, even if you're self-driving. Well, uh, talking about Freiburg, it is also another beautiful town. Uh, it's known for its uh, medieval town center, uh, cobblestone, square, uh, cobblestone square. It's a mix of Baroque, Renaissance, and uh, Gothic buildings. So one can definitely enjoy the beauty when you are in uh, Freiburg. Now uh, we move to the Moselle region or the Moselle Valley, uh, which is the oldest Rhine, uh, oldest wine growing region in Germany. Uh, it has got lush terraced vineyards, uh, prom uh, river promenades, which you can see it in the picture, or the fairy tale villages. It is uh, known uh, for as a perfect uh, romantic holiday destination. Uh, so maybe again, this could be really uh, worked on and very affordable in terms of planning uh, whenever you're planning a Rhine region or a cell drive. So this uh, Moselle Valley could be definitely worth a visit. Lastly, uh, we move to Koblenz. So Koblenz, this town is known for its uh, unique geography, where two rivers meet, uh, Rhine and Moselle. And so why I'm telling you this, because you know when I was there in Koblenz, I was actually told that this is how the river meets. So this is the reason I just want to share that little geog geography about the city which I have. So one can explore the captivating river views, ancient architecture to cable cars. One can also make a visit uh, or maybe do an excursion or do uh, small little trips within the city via cable cars. One can have the most enjoyable sights and experiences in Koblenz. Trust me, it's worth a visit, and especially it's known as a winter, winter old town. So these were like few list of options or cities I could say or what one can cover when uh, they're planning their visit to uh, Germany during winters or maybe Christmas markets. Well, this was it from my end. Uh, lastly, I have for you is the specialist program. And uh, after completing all four modules, you could be entitled to be a destination Germany expert. I'm sure a lot of you would have already done that. You've got your certificate. In case you haven't availed, then make sure that you know you visit www.germanyspecialist.com and you can just get more detailed information as to what Germany has to offer. Well, thank you so much. And I hope you got a little clarity as to what Germany has to offer as a travel destination. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Anika, for that uh, wonderful presentation. Thank you, Akshay. Uh, I hope uh, everybody was clear about what Germany has to offer, especially for uh, tourists. Yes, I'm quite sure uh, that after today's uh, session, uh, the audience must have got a much more clearer picture of what Germany is. Uh, for the benefit of our audience, we have also shared this entire presentation, which will be available at the handout section. So you can all download from there. And uh, I would like to first thank the audience for their overwhelming response on posting questions throughout the course of this webinar. Audience uh, can still keep posting questions and we shall now take it up in our Q&A session. Uh, Anika, we have got a few questions for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, first of all, uh, as you know, uh, there is a bit of a, a popularity for destination weddings these days. Uh, so mm -hmm. of our audience want to know which are the most popular destinations in Germany for such uh, lean destination weddings. 
Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, so this is also something very exciting, which is definitely come up with Germany because there are a lot of weddings or small uh, uh, wedding receptions which are taking place in Germany. So I would like to point out we've got Wiesbaden. We've got a little chapel in Wiesbaden, uh, which which well uh, which goes well uh, with. Uh, Uh, weddings. We also have uh, the Neuschwanstein Castle. So, not in Neuschwanstein Castle, definitely there's a castle just adjacent to that where you can do like a small wedding or maybe like a gala wedding reception. Also, there are uh, there's uh, what do you call a uh, old chapel which is called the Rothenburg Ober Chapel, which is located in Rothenburg Ober town. and works well with wedding venues so there are a lot of uh, options one can definitely avail and especially you know uh, during uh, honey as in during uh, wedding season people actually opt for uh, these uh, out of the box locations because it's very striking and intriguing as well so there are a lot of options one can uh, definitely try uh, or maybe choose so in fact you know maybe by end of the presentation we can share the list of venues uh, definitely one can opt uh, for the wedding uh, questions or uh, queries these guys they get uh thank you so much and uh, also anika during the presentation you mentioned that you are a mercedes fan and uh, the mercedes museum is a must visit so uh, uh, we have a question that is there any uh, mercedes experiential tour or where a traveler can experience the mercedes car or any such uh, tours happening uh okay so that's something which i would not be able to answer right now about this because during this time but of course uh and there are a lot of guided tours which one can avail when they are uh, visiting this uh, museum they also you know the best part about these museums is that one can actually uh, take pictures sit inside the car even drive uh, in these cars they have a passage just next to the museum where with your uh, driving license they can easily uh, drive these cars so these are like worth the uh, taking experiences one can actually uh, make or do but of course like i mentioned that you know everybody has to book all these things well in advance because these they are fully packed throughout the year so even you know if there are small groups it's very difficult for them to cater so definitely these guided tours or these experiential tours can be uh, really done when they are in uh, the mercedes benz museum also it also gives uh, english guided tours so there are a lot of experiential tours one can uh, plan or uh, make bookings for uh, thank you so much akshay uh, just to just to chime in uh, here it's quite an interesting question and like anika has already covered a fair bit of it just to add my two cents here uh, so we have got like multiple driving experiences in germany uh, starting from uh, the bmw driving experience where you get to drive the m sport uh, uh, bmw as well uh and you get a certificate after the completion of the course as well uh we have got the nurburgring track racing track where not only do you get to drive the german made vehicles you also get to drive other italian make vehicles as well uh uk made vehicles as well uh and uh if i talk about driving experience in leipzig uh, leipzig uh, we have got the porsche experience uh, where in i mean you drive on mud tracks so I mean, there is no dearth of driving options especially and that to in german engineered vehicles so i mean if you are comparing i mean like, like i saw the question for up from abdul uh, where he was wanting to explore certain options similar to have, what we have in abu dhabi like the f1 uh, uh, driving experience uh, in abu dhabi i mean we have got like multiple options and quite interesting ones uh, thank got- you thank you so much saurabh uh, for the response uh connecting to this question uh as you all see that self drive uh is getting very popular and uh, with all the social distancing and everything in place people are now opting for more self drive so there is a question that uh, is an indian license valid in germany for uh, the self drive or do they need to take an international license or how is it okay uh so no uh, i've i guess i've already mentioned in my slide before uh, whenever you are driving uh, in germany 
with your Indian driving license, the one which looks like a new uh, license or the one which has a chip on it, it's very much valid and you don't need any interna international or any uh, translation to it. With your Indian driving license, you can easily drive around the German roads, uh, which is actually valid for six months. So you actually don't need any additional international permit. Okay, uh, thank you so much. And uh, see, as this year, most of us uh, have missed the Ox October Fest and couldn't celebrate. So, uh, would you like to mention uh, the best places where one can go for a beer tour next year whenever they travel? Well, uh, Germany is also like uh, famous for its beer route. So, uh, definitely Munich is one option. Bamberg is one option, which I mentioned that Bamberg itself is a city of uh, breweries, uh, which is known as the 10 best breweries. So, Bamberg is definitely one which you can opt for. Uh, Cologne is famous for its Kjolsch beer. So, you can definitely plan a lot of your uh, itineraries around beer tours. There are a lot of uh, traditional old breweries which are uh, in uh, different cities or regions. So, yeah, there are a lot of beer tours which are available. And uh, the best ones, I will definitely say, is uh, Munich, Bamberg, Cologne, and then moving on, then you can easily uh, go to the Moselle, which is actually famous for uh, beer uh, tasting. So, yeah, these are like few itineraries one can try. Okay, uh, and coming back to the uh, German specialist uh, program, which you have mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, would you like to share how many modules are there and uh, would the uh, so, uh, tour operator or travel agent who completes it would get a certification or any incent incentives or anything? Uh, unfortunately, I'm really sorry, there's no incentive <laughs> plan, but definitely. Uh, as I mentioned that wherever they need our support, we'll be happy to help them. Uh, talking about the module, we've got uh, four detailed modules. And uh, so you can easily cover uh, all the cities, regions, which probably I might have missed during my presentation. So you'll basically just not get to know about a particular city or a region of Germany, but the entire destination Germany. So yeah, once you complete this four uh, detailed module, you can be a destination Germany expert. And of course, you will get a certificate. Uh, by the German National Tourist Office. OK, thank you so much. Uh, coming back uh, to the my segment. So uh, mm -hmm. can you share which are the best uh, cities or destinations which has the best MICE infrastructure and uh, good for a MICE uh, event in Germany? So in the previous years also, in fact, until last year, 2019, uh, Germany did quite a lot of uh, MICE incentive groups uh, from India. And uh, autom like all of a sudden, even we were like very uh, happy to know that or glad to know that uh, Germany is considered, all these cities are considered to be as one of the MICE destinations. So Berlin is one of the first class, uh, first, definitely a first option uh, when you are looking out for a MICE venue because they've got a lot of uh, big, huge venues for gala dinners. They've got hotels which are very much affordable and uh, definitely depending on the size of the group, there are a few hotels which also offers Indian food uh, because a lot of times we've got a request that uh, we need Indian uh, chef or uh, Indian food, depending again, depending on the size of the group. Uh, and maybe a uh, few hotels can easily or restaurants can make their chef uh, cook for them so those are like few things one can do or maybe uh, for that matter munich which is picked up well for mice because there are a lot of four to four star to five star hotels in the city again talking about mice uh, gala venues there are a lot to offer so berlin uh, and munich definitely is like uh, places one can do their uh, mice groups okay, and if most cities in germany uh, will be able to uh, cater to mice groups um, depending on where you want to go and what you want to do. Um, so I would suggest that if you mice groups so far, as Anika mentioned, Munich and Berlin are popular, but uh, Dusseldorf, uh, Dresden, Southwest Germany, if you talk about Stuttgart, most places, depending on what you need, can cater to mice facilities. Uh, everything is quite close. I mean, you can take a train from, for example, Frankfurt to Cologne and get there in 45 minutes. Uh, so depending on what you really want to do and uh, what you need, most cities in Germany will be able to cater to your mice, mice needs, including under underground uh, salt water, uh, salt 
mines or the highest peak in uh, Germany, the Zugspitz, all of them cater to mice needs. Uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, this, this is a bit interesting. And uh, audience, this was Mr. Romit Theophilus, Director of German National Tourist Office from India. Uh, thank you so much, Romit. Uh, Romit, we have one more, one more question from our audience. Uh, as a lot of international cities have uh, particular city passes or one pass for all, uh, is there something uh, similar in Germany for various cities or anything? Every uh, every city has its own pass. Um, uh, sometimes regions also have their pass. By region, I mean states. But everybody has a different pass. So uh, even if you want to sell these passes, uh, I know for a fact that, for example, Stuttgart or Cologne, a lot of them are commissionable as well. So uh, before your clients go, you should talk about uh, giving them these passes. You get free public transport, entry to a lot of museums are discounted or free. Uh, a lot of hotspot information is there so you can connect to the internet for free again uh, uh, so there's a lot of advantage in buying the city passes so every city does have its own pass uh, some passes are actually quite unique Ani, uh, Anika if you could shed some light or sorry if you could shed some light on the passes for example in the black forest hello yeah all right uh, so in the black forest region for example I mean uh, if you stay for a minimum of two nights uh, you are entitled to a Hochschwarzwald card, which is the Black Forest region card, uh, which actually gives you discounted access uh, to more than 50 attractions in the vicinity, in the region. Uh, also on public transport, you enjoy uh, quite a few benefits. I mean, uh, discounted uh, benefits in the Black Forest region. So, I mean, that's quite lucrative. I mean, this is only on a minimum stay of two nights. However, I mean, if I come to cities like Munich, I mean, the metropolitan cities uh, like Munich, uh, so, I mean, there you have multiple options in terms of choosing passes, depending on the length of your stay, two day pass, three day pass, four, five day pass, uh, and depending on the number of people that are traveling. I mean, you can always opt for a group uh, pass as well, uh, which is kind or of a family, uh, pass. Or family pass, which is kind of a better deal. And uh, it also covers, I mean, in terms of the diameter also, the inner region of a city and the outskirts as well. I mean, if somebody wants to venture towards the outskirts as well, so, I mean, it, it you can cover that region as well. So it's it's for an added cost, of course. But again, I mean, you expand your uh, area that you can cover within your stay. So I mean, quite, quite lucrative. I mean, you can always buy them. And like uh, Romit already mentioned, it's it's commissionable as well. So you can enjoy that margin uh, when you're selling it to the end client. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I just want to throw some light here. It uh, You know, there are a few uh, welcome cards or the cards which we talk about. They also provide a large selection of uh, price reductions and discounts on entry fees to museums. Uh, also, it also acts as a local public transport ticket. So you can use these cards to book guided tours of the city at a very favorable price. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Saurabh and Anika. And uh, also connecting to this, uh, which is which is the best time to visit uh, the Black Forest? Is it during the summers or winters, or do you suggest uh, throughout the year, or how is it? Uh, if you ask me, I would say throughout the year. It depends. If you like the summer, then uh, the Black Forest is quite pretty. If you like the snow, the Black Forest is again quite pretty. Uh, so it just depends what you like. You can visit it all year round. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Th thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Anika, any final words for our audience? Make sure that you plan your next holiday to Germany and uh, wait for the travel season to come and uh, get more worth of Germany, what Germany has to offer. I'd just like to encourage everyone also to go to the German specialist program if they haven't done so. It is free and mm -hmm. uh, you do receive a certificate at the end of it. Um, through the specialist program is how we choose our study tours or fam tours. Uh, this is how we maintain our database for all the events that we do all across India. So I would just uh, request everyone to uh, register and uh, do the German specialist program. Uh, thank you, uh, Anika, Saurabh and Ramit for uh, answering all the queries from our uh, audience. I would like to thank each one of you for being a part of this informative webinar on Destination Germany and hope you all enjoyed viewing the same. Uh, this is Akshay along with Destination Germany signing off for now. See you at our next webinar. Thank you.
थैंक यू